Hi there, my name is David Kenny. Welcome to Life From Above. Glad you can be with us on the program today. Today we have a special guest with us. We have Mark Weaver from the Vermilion Church of Christ. Uh, he's here, he's told me about this new book that he's read that he's very excited about called Muscle and Shovel by Mike Shank. And you know, he's, he's been telling me about it a little bit here and there and wanted to know if maybe possibly you'd like to learn more about it as well. And his enthusiasm is contagious, so I was glad to have him come and to tell us more about it. So. Mark, why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the book and uh, your reaction to it? Well, uh, David, Muscle and a Shovel, which this is uh, the book that I'm holding right here, obviously, uh, is just the most interesting book that I've read in a very long time. I just have been so impressed with the book, uh, with how you just, you just want to turn the pages, it just, you just want to read it. And uh, Muscle and a Shovel is a story of Michael and his wife, Johnita Shank, uh, a young couple that was living in Nashville, Tennessee. And the man that they met that really changed their lives, and his name was Randall. Now, uh, they were, you know, your, your typical young couple in the early 90s. Uh, they were materialistic. Uh, they were interested in things, you know, that any Christian would identify as worldly. You know, and uh, this story is all about how even at this very young age, they were, they were kind of like trying to find out more, but it seemed like anyone they asked, they got a different answer uh, from everyone they talked to. But uh, the reason I'm, I've been so excited about the book is because it's such an interesting story. It's the kind of thing you, you want to read it. You, you, you want to turn the pages. I mean, I, I couldn't tell you the number of people I've spoken to already that have either stayed up too late or got up too early or forgot to put the trash out or something because they were in the middle of reading the book. And uh, it's, it's not just that it's such an enjoyable uh, story to read, but it's so real. Uh, the, the very fact hey, that it's it actually is a true story, okay, and it has, there's some elements of a biography to it. It just kind of draws you in. You're, you're drawn to the characters, you're, you're drawn to their interaction. You know, you're, you find yourself kind of rooting for people uh, in the story. And uh, as you're reading along, you know, you, you can't help but be encouraged and, and uplifted. And, and also to learn, there's, there's, you, you learn about human interaction, you learn a little bit more about people. But uh, Randall is an amazing character. Uh, Michael is working for a company. Uh, he basically is what we would today probably call a copier repairman. And he meets this man, Randall. And, and while Michael and Janita are living this life where they want to just climb the corporate ladder and, and, and you know, they're trying to, they're going to have that house in the country and a house at the beach and, and, and everything like that. And, and Randall has a, has a different way of looking at life. And, uh, he just comes across to Michael as someone who just has kind of things together. He's, he's, he's kind to everyone. He, he's happy. You know, he seems to have life under control. But one of the most interesting things about Muscle and a Shovel and, and what you get from the interaction between Randall and, and Michael, the, the main characters that are, are presented most of the time, is that you know, it, it's amazing what people can learn, okay, when they're willing to listen to one another. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're kind of like, they're, they're not alike, they're not the same kind of people at all. But there's this, there's this friendship that grows up, okay, that is, is not the kind of ordinary friendship you see. And uh, as I said, Randall is a fascinating character. And, and the most amazing thing about this is, is that all of these characters, uh, they're they're real. They're they're real people, and so because they're real people, they're they're just so much more. You, you just find yourself empathizing with them, if you will. So I I didn't just enjoy this book. I, I really think I benefited. I think I benefited in my Christian life. I think that everybody who reads this book that I've talked to so far has made that comment. You know, so it, it's an outstanding book. I highly recommend it. And of course, you know, uh, the, the, you might. They ask us, well, how will I know that I'm going to like it? Well, there's, there's some things you can do. Okay, there's a, you can read an excerpt on Amazon.com and, and things like that, but uh, you, you won't be sorry. You, know? now, you mentioned the idea of, you know, Michael Shanks, the author, and you mentioned the character Randall. 
and things like that. Now, this, this is actually based on a true story. Could you elaborate a little bit more about that? Because you mentioned there's a character, Randall, and then Michael Shanks, the actual person. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate? You know, this is a true story. Yes. Correct. It, it is a true story. Uh, Michael and Johnita Shank, that's their real names, but Randall is a pseudonym. Okay, uh, Randall is a real person, uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that he did not want his actual name used. And given the tremendous success of the book, that was probably a really smart thing because he'd probably be being asked for interviews and people would want to talk to him and everything like that. So it was probably very wise on his part, but I, I don't really think he did it for that. I think, he's, again, as you learn about the character, as you learn about the person, uh, he's just a really humble person. And I, and I think that he wants to make sure that God gets all the glory for all the good that he does in this life. But when you look at Randall and, and when you look at Michael and Johnita and, and there, there's a host of other characters, it, you know, it's an every man kind of a story. Uh, this isn't something, this is not an, an ivory tower Christianity story. Okay, this is, this is a story that every person that has any kind of desire to know anything about Jesus Christ every person that, that wants to know the Word of God, every, every person that is trying in any way to live the Christian life is going to benefit from this story. Because again, okay, it, it is actually a beautiful story okay, about a friendship and how this friendship develops and how it changes people's lives. Now you mentioned about you know, the book. The book is, I think, fairly recent. Um, it's a, a pretty new book. Um, how many people you think be reading a book like this? Have you seen a lot of people reading it? Is it obviously it's pretty popular. You know about it, but maybe you can give people some insight about its popularity. Yeah. Well, like I had given John those slides. Okay, if he could show that first slide, that was in there. Okay, you'll you'll see. Okay, on that slide. Okay, at this point, as this this book is now in its this is its fifth printing, all right, the, the fifth edition, uh, and and that fifth edition. Over 50,000 copies of the book have been sold so far. Now, that's probably counting the Kindle edition okay, and the print edition as well. But, but 50,000 copies of a book, right, and, and there is just no end in sight. Okay? It's literally just exploding out there. And, and the, it's, it's the number one bestseller uh, within the Churches of Christ right now. Right? And in addition to that, there are... A, to a, a minimum total at this point in November of 2013, over 5,000 people who have become Christians, those who have obeyed the gospel, that it can be directly traced to reading this book in one way or another. And that's a, that's a staggering number, okay, by, by any measurement. And uh, if you want to learn more about that, Muscle and the Shovel has a really nice Facebook page, okay, that tells a lot about some of the things uh, that have happened. and. But in order for you to really understand uh, some of the greatness of this book, I'd like to tell you the story about how I came to actually have a copy of it. And uh, what had happened is I had heard about the book a couple of times. Uh, you know, somebody would say, well, I'm reading this awesome book, okay, and they'd post something on Facebook about it or something like that. And, and you know, I would, I would, because of my acquaintance with them, I would, like, look at what they had written and said, oh, yeah, I should, really should read that. But like most people, okay, my reading list is so long, there's already a whole bunch of other stuff that's on it and everything. But... But I went to an event okay, that was uh, predominantly for Christians. Okay, everybody that was there, uh, you know, for the most part, was a Christian. And uh, there's a lady who uh, owns a traveling bookstore. And uh, they were unloading the books, and, and uh, I was assisting, and you know, we were just helping one another out and getting this all set up. And I noticed that the many of the books, okay, the cases, there, was, there, were, there were different kinds of books in them. But Muscle and the Shovel was being unloaded by the case. Okay, they they were it was selling so much. Okay, that they were just you know entire cases of the book, and so I uh, I had a friend of mine while I was there uh, who lives in Oklahoma. He said to me, he said, "Have you read Muscle and a Shovel yet?" And I said, "No." I said, "But it's on my reading list. I definitely got to. I'm going to pick one up while I'm here." And he said, "Well, let me buy it for you." And I said, "I can buy my own books. I mean, you don't you don't have to buy it for me. You know, it's like yeah, it's that's fine." He said, "No." He said, "I I really want to." He said, "I, I really want to buy you the book." So I said. Fine, you know, free book. You know, why why would I be disturbed by that? So did. yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so he wrote something nice in it, you know, and everything. Like gave me the book. And David, by the time I I don't think I'd even made it through the first couple of chapters when I was thinking everybody needs to read this book. Uh, this this is something, and I should say this this time. <laughs> I'm, I'm not getting paid for this, okay? You know, there's no. Well, I know I'm I, not paying you. I, I was gonna say, <laughs> I, I'm I'm not Michael Shank's salesman or anything like that. But this is a great book. Okay, it's just as simple as that, and everyone would benefit from this book. 
But that's what's happening. That, that story that I just told you about how, you know, I have this book because a friend of mine gave it to me. Uh, this, this same friend of mine has already bought at least 30 copies of this book to give to other people. Now, you know, that's, that's a pretty significant chunk of change. Somebody's got to really believe that something is important. They have to have a heart full of love uh, to do something like that. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just amazing when you see the number of people that are reading the book. I, I think, for example, on Amazon's website, uh, they allow you to make reviews there. And uh, there were, you know, the reviews on Amazon are everything from a five star, which is this is an excellent book, and even if it was $100, you should buy it, mm -hmm. to a one star. It's like, well, it might be okay to prop your bed up with, but other than that, don't bother. Yeah, anybody could write those. Things. Sure, sure. Anybody can write a, a review, good or bad, or anything sure. like that. But the, it's the ratio of those reviews that's really amazing. I think when I looked at it yesterday, there were 260 reviews that were five stars, and there were... I think there were like eight, there were four stars, and uh, there was three one stars and three two stars. Uh, the, the huge preponderance, and, and I, I'm not sure if that means that these are the people who are mostly reading it on a Kindle device, or you know, again, you can get the Kindle app for your iPad and, and use it that way, whichever it happens to be, but uh, you know, I, I couldn't help myself, okay? A friend of mine gave me a copy of this, okay, and I wanted to read it on my iPad, you know, so I, I bought the Kindle edition as well, you know? Uh, but when you see that kind of thing, I mean, it's just, it's just kind of amazing. It just tells you that people are, people's lives are being touched. They're, be, they're being changed. Right? They're, they're really getting something out of it. You know, because uh, just, as I said, you can, you can just see there's like this groundswell. And I, I don't know if I've said this already, so I want to make sure I point this out. This has been done mostly by word of mouth. This book is not having a national advertising campaign. Okay? It, it's not being advertised you know, on any kind of you know, radio network or, or except for TV like what we're doing right now, you know, and it's still growing so quickly. And as I said, the, the strange thing is the number of people you'll meet who have read the book that immediately buy other copies to give to their friends, you know, and so uh, I, I've really been very impressed with that. Well, I know it's really hard in uh, the little bit of religious publishing information I have. It's hard to sell any book. Sure. But religious books are even more difficult uh, to really break through and actually uh, get into a lot of people's hands. But then you always have, I mean, selling a book is one thing. Getting people to read the book, now that's even the bigger challenge. I mean, you can get somebody, you know, you can get somebody to buy, you know, judge a book by its cover, people will buy sure. books by the cover. Mm -hmm. But to get them to read it, now that's a real challenge. Now you mentioned that people are actually reading the book, which the Amazon numbers reflect that because you have to actually have, well I mean I guess you could cheat the system, but who has time to do that? Uh, you actually read the book and you have to want to go back to Amazon and actually click a review and write a review for it to be in that tally to rate it. So it isn't just automatically, okay, it's you, know, you assign it. You actually have to go back and do that. So these are pretty committed relatively speaking, committed people mm -hmm. uh, to that process. Well, why do you think people are actually reading the book versus just buying the book? Well, first of all, I'd say that's a very good observation about the difficulty of selling a religious book. Okay? And I think part of the reason for it is because it doesn't read like a commentary. It, it, it doesn't read like, okay, well, this is what this Greek word means in this particular context or anything like that. It, it's a true story, and it reads like a story. And it has with it uh, an element of biography. It has with it an element of mystery. Uh, you know, but I think the biggest single reason right, why it, people are reading it and just kind of gobbling it up is because it's, it's challenging. It, it's mentally challenging. And if John could show us the neck that I have the, something I want to read from the book, from the very beginning of the book, and I got a couple of slides there. But the author, Michael, says right in the beginning of the book, under a, he a heading that says, Fair Warning, it says, Your beliefs about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Almighty Father in Heaven, and your church are beliefs that you hold close to your heart, and rightfully so. However, your beliefs are about to be challenged in a way that you never thought possible. The story you are about to read is completely true in every sense. There are no exaggerations or embellishments. What you're about to read happened to me several years ago, and I'm sharing with you for one reason and one reason only. I cannot, however, reveal this reason unless you read this story from beginning to end. 
If you make it to the end, you'll discover the reason, and I promise you it'll be worth your time. But let me give you a fair warning. What you are about to read might anger, frustrate, and agitate your senses beyond description. This story may force you to examine the beliefs you hold so dear to your heart. This story is not for the weak-minded, nor is it for those who have their sensibilities easily offended. Many who begin this story won't make it to the end. Will you have the courage, the heart, and the honesty of character to finish this story to its end? And as you can see, as you read that, that's a very, fairly challenging statement to mm -hmm. make. Uh, he's, he's saying, okay, if you read this book, there's a very good possibility that you're going to have, you're, you're going to start to question your own beliefs. You, you may be angry because somebody says something. And, and I can say in all honesty, I found that to be true. I, I really did. But it's, it's a, the story just draws you in. It, it just draws you in. I, I remember I said okay, there's kind of like elements of a mystery to it. Well, in the book, the, the very first chapter, which is entitled Top of the Steps, kind of drops you into what's actually closer to the end of the story chronologically. And you spend the time then when you're reading trying to figure out how they got there. You know, and, and again, it's a, it's a very, very interesting story. And I, I should say this at this time. I have read other stories that were written by very well-meaning, very kind-hearted people that they really wanted to be a writer. And, uh, and again, without being mean or, 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 or bitter or anything like that, it just wasn't a very well-written story. It wasn't really very well put together and, or anything like that. And this isn't like that. This is a well-written story. It's well put together. It's not full of grammatical errors that you find kind of throwing you off. I'm, I'm not a grammar Nazi, but some people are. That really <laughs> kind of ruins the story for them. But, but it, it's just amazing, okay, that you can be drawn into this story. And again, as I said, because it's a true story, because it's an everyman story, because it's a story about a friendship, and because it's the story of how these people came together and how it changed their lives, it's something that everybody just wants to read. You know, another reason I think the, it's such a popular book is because it really is very uplifting. Okay, it, it's uplifting as you, as you walk through Michael and Johnita's life with them. Okay, and you see the things that they're learning and how they're growing and, 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 they're, and things like that. And uh, it's just amazing. Okay, to, like I said, you, you empathize with them. You, you, you want to be, you, you find yourself rooting for the people in the story, which is really pretty wonderful, you know. And uh, I, as I said, I mean, I, I'm obviously, I'm a little gushing about it, but it's an awesome story, it really is. Now, you mentioned that, uh, you know, it's got, it's obviously has, you know, it's drama, mm -hmm. a lot of drama, a lot of, a lot of thoughts. Uh, that are going to be challenged. Um, you know, in, in nonfiction, you know, a lot of nonfiction that's out there doesn't really have much of a purpose other than entertainment. Mm -hmm. But this book isn't just entertaining. It's it isn't just dramatic, mm -hmm. and it's not just thought provoking. It's actually useful too. You mentioned to me. Why don't you yeah. tell me a little bit more how you view the book as useful? Well, I think first of all. If you read this book as an individual, you are going to grow. You are going to be encouraged. You're going to have a little bit of your faith in humanity restored. You're going to be encouraged okay, by the way some people handle the Bible, the way they allow God to speak to them through His Word. You know, so at the individual level, it's very encouraging. I would strongly encourage people I'd like to see everyone go to their, uh, to their church and say to the minister or, or to maybe to a Bible class teacher, look, could we buy this book? Could we, could we read this book and discuss this book uh, you know, all, as a group? Because if, if they were to do that, I think it, it would be so helpful, it would be so encouraging, but they would learn. There's, there's things in the book, okay, that, you know, again, if, you, if your Bible knowledge isn't real deep, you know, Randall's a pretty amazing teacher uh, as, as he goes through this. Uh, and, you know, sometimes it's, it's amazing how w we will learn things when we're not even trying to uh, because of that. And so that's, that's pretty neat. But the other thing, way it's really useful, and I think every Christian has someone like this in their life. You have that person that has a lot of Bible questions but doesn't want to ask. Or you have that person who they know who Jesus is, but they just don't know enough about him. Or, or you have that person who has no Bible knowledge whatsoever, but, but they're your good friend, but they just don't seem to really want to talk. 
you know, and everything, I would give them this book. I would give them this book, okay, and I, and, and I would say to them, look, I, I, I love you. If you read this book, you, you will not be sorry that you read this book. And uh, I think that it, it, it fills, if, if you will, a gap, a, a gap that, that needed to be filled in, in, in people's ability to learn and understand and get something, okay, by this wonderful story, you know, that they can read. So. Well, is there anything else that uh, sort of grabs you about the book? And I mean, you've, you've talked a lot about it. Um, yeah. what, what other, any pieces, other pieces of information about it you'd like to share with us? <laughs> I'd say the biggest thing is that I, uh, I, I, um, I'm kind of twiddling my thumbs and I'm really hoping uh, the next book, uh, there's actually a sequel to it that is called When Shovels Break. And uh, obviously you and I are here talking at the beginning of November uh, of 2013. I don't know if, well, how many times this will be rebroadcast. So. But uh, at the end of this month, at the end of November, uh, the book When Shovels Break is going to come out. And When Shovels Break, uh, one of the things that it addresses, uh, it's, it's a little deeper, a lot of the things in Muscle and a Shovel are you know, about a person's beginning walk with the Lord. Whereas uh, When Shovels Break is about w perhaps when we go through those struggles. Now again, as a person who had become a Christian and then become unfaithful and, and stayed unfaithful for 13 years, the idea of a book that's going to address that, that's going to talk about, you know, well, what do you do, okay, when you, when you turn your back on your faith, or what do you do when you throw it away? And, and so I'm really excited about that. And um, I also think that, you know, again, I, I would encourage people to make their own judgment. You know, when it, when it comes to this book, okay, make their own judgment. Uh, I, I can say if, if I was a wealthy man, I would tell everybody, you buy the book, and if you don't like it, I'll buy it back from you. You know, but uh, unfortunately, I'm not quite there, <laughs> so uh, I don't see that happening. But well, let me ask you another question. Uh, you know, one of the things about you know, some of the things I see about religious books that concerns me about some of the modern religious books I see, and I don't read a lot of them, but when I look at them, at, if I'm in a store or something, a lot of them don't seem to use a lot of Bible. I mean, they talk a lot about religious things, mm -hmm. but you know, Churches of Christ, as you both of us know. It's about, you know, what does the Bible say? Mm -hmm. You know, a story is one thing, but what does the Bible really say? Well, one of the things that I did notice about the book when I looked at it was he has a chapter where he gives a lot of scriptural citations in it. Can you tell him a little bit about that? It seems yeah. like it's a thousand or something like that. Yeah, the book is the book is chock full of scripture, but quite frankly, most of the time it's Randall quoting it. Okay, okay? and uh, what's, what's really happening is, is that Randall is a person that allows the Bible to speak for itself. Okay, and uh, sometimes, all right, when in, again, in the course of this friendship and in the course of things that happen in the book, okay, you know, uh, Michael, who does not know a whole lot about the Bible, will, will ask something, and, and Randall invariably answers with, with Scripture. And so, yeah, I, I think that's a major plus of the book, okay, it really is. And, it, and it's, it's kind of, like, as I said, it's enjoyable. It's, an, it's enjoyable to listen to this okay, as you go through. So. Well, can you mind telling us where people can find the book, and that way they can yeah, get it and sure. read it? Yeah, again, okay, I should make this disclaimer, okay, I'm not getting a commission on this or anything, but um, if John could show that next slide uh, that's there, uh, I wanted to just bring this up before we talked about where it can be gotten. This is something that Michael says, please let me point out something that I hope is completely apparent. I've used no personal interpretation of the Holy Scriptures. I've merely shared my story and revealed the Scriptures of God just as it happened. Now, here's the hard part. Will you accept the simple, plain, straightforward teachings of God's Word? Now, if we could see the next slide, you'll see if you want to order the book, you go to michaelshankministries.com. And the next page shows what that looks like. That's what michaelshankministries.com looks like. And then also on the next slide, you'll see that you can go to amazon.com and order it there. And it's also available in a print edition just about anywhere. Well, great, great. Well, that sounds really good. Um, the book sounds really interesting. I'm sure a lot of people benefit from it. I looked a little bit about Michael Shank and his biography. It looks like he's from Illinois. And uh, since I graduated from there, we have that in common. So I really appreciate you coming in and sharing this with us. Okay, well, thank you very much. And David, I'd like you to have that. Oh, thank you very much. Well, we're thankful for Mark for coming in. We're glad you can enjoy the program. And make sure you pick up a copy and read it and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.
Before we close our program today, we'd like to take a moment and review this roadmap to heaven with you since the matter is so serious. There are many incorrect set of directions out there and sadly so many people are following them. For example, some people have been given wrong turns. They believe things such as faith only, works only, or grace only. Or some attempt to change the order of the turns, being baptized before they even believe. Some people fail to realize what point they are on the map don't even open their Bibles yet and they think they're saved already. As a person travels in a car or takes a hike, it has to follow the proper directions, so we must follow the proper directions to heaven. Let's take a look at the directions on our roadmap to heaven here. You have to look at these passages in your Bible for yourself. We'll just list the steps, the turns, on the way. First is to believe or to have faith. And then number two, to repent, to turn away from sin. Number three is to confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Number four is immersion, or to be baptized, which is a burial in water to have your sins washed away. And then you're added to the church by the Lord, not by a group of people, or not by giving some kind of testimonial experience or things like that. And then once you're added, you need to serve and worship the Lord faithfully all the days of your life. And that, the key word's faithfully. You don't waver. And that's very important. We need to keep in mind, too, that in Noah's day, there was a big flood, and only people in the ark were saved from the flood. The same is true today. There is no salvation outside the Lord's church. Where are you on the road map to heaven? Thanks for watching our program. Please let us know if we can assist you with further information for your journey.